One of the oldest urban fallacies was at one time summarized in the phrase, slums are nurseries of crime. Physically run-down neighborhoods have often had much higher crime rates than neighborhoods where more affluent people have had newer and more upscale housing. However, as statisticians have long pointed out, correlation is not causation. Moreover, even where causation is involved, that does not determine the direction of causation. Do bad physical surroundings promote bad behavior, or does bad behavior cause physical surroundings to deteriorate and prevent people from earning higher incomes that would enable them to live in better surroundings? For well over a century, the prevailing view behind much government policy has been that bad physical surroundings promote crime and other activities detrimental to society and to the individuals who engage in these activities. From this belief have followed massive and costly government programs to demolish slums or blighted areas and to relocate individuals from those areas into either newly built government housing projects or to scatter individuals and families from bad neighborhoods into good neighborhoods. Whatever the merits of the belief in the causal role of physical surroundings as a hypothesis to be tested empirically, its role in the real world has not been that of a hypothesis, but rather of a belief seldom tested against facts and even resistant to facts. In Jane Jacobs' classic book on urban life, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, she recalled visiting a Boston working-class neighborhood called the North End and then discussing it with a city planner she knew. The North End had been settled by poor Italian immigrants and, like many neighborhoods inhabited by people struggling to get started, it was initially very crowded and run down. Over time, however, as these Italian-Americans and their offspring began to find their way in the American economy and society, the neighborhood changed for the better, as many people were able to afford to move out, relieving the crowding, and those who remained behind began to upgrade their homes by remodeling and adding new amenities. Third-party observers, however, could not see those improvements that took place behind the walls of these people's homes, much less the improvements in the people themselves as they adjusted to American life and norms. When Jane Jacobs phoned a city planner friend and told him of her excursion into the North End, he asked, Why in the world are you down in the North End?